Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Samantha, and I'm coming to you from Starkey Farmstead. So for the ones of you who watch our channel pretty often, some of you may know I put a pitchfork through my foot last week. I am recovering quite nicely from surgery. Saw the podiatrist today. Everything looks great. So on to the topic for today's video. Are they putting something in the chicken feed? The rabbit feed? I'm hearing a lot of people here at our forum that come to visit and they're telling us my chickens aren't laying. I'm hearing people on YouTube. My husband has heard, heard people on TikTok saying, hey, my chickens quit laying. And there is some concern. Let me ask you this question. If you wanted to control a people, what would be your way of doing it? I'll give you a second to think about that. You would control their food. Now for the ones of us who raise chickens, we do that because we want the independence to know what our chickens are eating. We want cleaner food and we want food independence and chickens are very easy to raise as well as rabbits. So that's why a lot of us smaller farmsteads and homesteads and backyard gardeners tend to have chickens and rabbits, right? Well guys, we may be at a point in American history where the people who are controlling the food systems are now finding ways to make you dependent upon them again. You buy chickens for freedom, but then you buy their supplies to feed your chickens. Well, you have chickens, so the only way that they can control how much food you get from that chicken would be possibly to put the wrong ingredients or ingredients that are gonna slow down your chickens from laying. So whether or not they're doing it, we can't prove it. It's just a conspiracy theory. But what you can do is take control of what you're feeding your chickens. Now we have a video out already in our playlist, Everything Chickens and Quails, where I tell you about how we feed our chickens here. I do use some laying pellets, but I'm not dependent on them. They are for those days where it's really cold and I don't have time to go forage for my chickens or I'm out of millet or I'm out of black oil sunflower seeds or it's not that time of year where I have black soldier fly larvae growing on my farm. So what we do here is a combination of eggshells and oyster shells, okay? That gives them calcium. It also adds grit so that they can digest their food. The second thing you need to look into getting for your chickens would be black oil sunflower seeds. Now, black oil sunflower seeds are kind of one of those things you want to be careful. You don't want to give your chickens too much because you can actually put them into molt. But if they are already in molt or it's very cold, that black oil sunflower seeds adds nutrition, micronutrients, and an oil back to their feathers that they need to help them grow them back. So that's a really good supplement. Millet, especially white millet seeds. Really good for your chickens as well as your quail. So look into that. The next thing would be whole kernel oats. Oats that still have the, can't think of the word for it guys, sorry. You know what I'm saying, still has the outside coating on it, has its shell. Feed those to your chickens. Another thing that you can do is buy your own cracked corn, okay? So you really don't need to buy their scratch feed. You don't even need their pellets. What you do need or to have some grains available to feed your chick chickens, especially in the cold months. Now in the spring, the summer and fall here in Southeast Louisiana, I can release my chickens and let them free roam through my garden and around my yard to find their own bugs. But I'll tell you what guys, a free tip, the best thing that you can do is compost in your chicken coop, okay? If you're composting in your chicken coop, your chickens will stay busy, they will peck at each other less, they will lay more eggs, and they will be more dependent on getting their own food because in our case, we have a racking pen. So we have rabbits on the front end of our chicken coop. They poop and pee directly to where the chickens are composting for me. Now my chickens dig through all this. And as they're digging through all this, there are things like beetles, worms, spiders. Occasionally, I hate to say it, Southeast Louisiana, sometimes you get like, little blowflies, you know what I'm saying. It's kind of gross, but the chickens love it. So they can dig through this compost and they can pull out things that they would like to eat, as well as giving them available grit sources so that they can digest their food. 
I hope that this helps. There's really no way to debunk the myth. Are they putting something in the chicken food? Are they putting something in the rabbit food? Who knows? But if you want true freedom from them, you're going to have to learn to naturally feed your animals. And I know that that can seem really overwhelming, guys. I feel your pain. When we started this journey almost three years ago, if you'd have asked me what I feed my chickens, it would have been pellets. Now you ask me what I feed my, chill it, my chickens, it's white millet, it's oats, black oil sunflower seeds, black soldier fly larvae, as many greens and fruits and, and anything else I can throw out there for them. Even meats, when we don't finish something at the dinner table, if it's not appropriate for the dogs, it goes to the chickens. It's just something you need to think about. If you really understood what they were putting in pelleted feeds and in dog food, you would really reconsider feeding your animals those things anyway. It's equivalent to us eating processed frozen foods. Okay, all the preservatives, all the things that are in those foods that we don't need in our bodies. It's the same thing with bag feed. I hope that this helps you just take a little break it doesn't matter what's going on, but you need to take control of what you feed your chickens. It's not that difficult and it's not any more expensive. Where I live, a 50 pound sack of chicken feed will run you right at $19 with tax. I can go to the nearest feed store and granary and pick up a 50 pound bag of oats for like $13 with tax. Not only can I feed my chickens, but I can feed my rabbits with those oats. And I'll be honest with you guys, I have some does that will not eat pelleted food. So I have to supplement with them with things like comfrey, fresh hay, oats, and black oil sunflower seeds to keep them healthy during their pregnancies. So I think everybody's feeling it. When I try to go back to bag feeds, my animals do not do as well. Now, why is that? Are they doing it on purpose? It doesn't matter. But I can show you the documentation here at the forum at Starkey Farmstead that when I'm feeding a more natural diet to my rabbits, my quails, and my chickens, I get better eggs, I get more eggs, the shells are harder, the chickens look better, the quail look better, the rabbits look better, I'm getting larger kit, I mean, larger deliveries and litter sizes with my kits, they grow out faster. The mothers are better mothers. So I'm just telling you, in my personal opinion, whether or not they're doing it now, something to the feed. If I wanted to take over a whole country and control the food supply, and I knew that people had chickens, but they hadn't figured out how to feed their chickens, well, then I would provide the chicken food for the chickens. And maybe, just maybe, that wouldn't be the best thing for the chickens, if you understand what I'm saying. So if you really want to break out of the system, use your head, do your research. There's a lot of information out there. It can get overwhelming. Start with oats and black oil sunflower seeds. You can feed those to your chickens and to your rabbits. Start with that right now in the winter. When spring comes, start planting foods, natural foods, that both your chickens and your rabbits can eat. Guys, you can do this. We come from generations of people who built this country from nothing. They were producers, they were not consumers. Right now, Americans are in an in-between. We consume and we produce. But when you're purchasing things to produce things, you're still in the loop, they still have control. So start slowly figuring out what works for you and your environment. Plan ahead. Don't just think about vegetables that you and your family want to eat. What can you plant this year that your chickens, your quails, your rabbits, your goats, even your dogs, what can you plant that's going to help keep those animals healthy? I hope that this helps you guys. I hope that you watched it all the way through. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for rowing in our boat and letting us row in yours. You guys have a blessed day.